This game is rated T for Teen. The Wonderful 101. Who is that 101st member? Oh yeah, that's you! Merry Christmas, one and all! Man, it seems like it's been half a year since I said that in a Christmas review. Oh wait. Anyway, welcome to another episode of Double RPG Reviews, where I take the time and effort to enjoy the most wonderful time of the year, where it's all about sharing and giving. I can give all those to my friends and family, as well as those that I know on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, etc. For this review, I originally planned for Final Fantasy 3 on the Super Nintendo, where it was known as Final Fantasy 6 overall, to be my Christmas review as I wanted to delve into another RPG that I have not even talked about for quite some time. But since other games have piqued my interest and since I've been bombarded with many great classics, specifically that came out on the Wii U last year and this year, I decided that for this Christmas review that I only review another Nintendo game for that matter. For this game specifically, Nintendo did not even create it, as it was developed by a third-party developer, as this killer app was something that a lot of people seemed to heavily overlook last year. So I guess all I have to say is this. Team, unite up! The alien invasion of Earth will be met by a group of fearless warriors that number just 100 souls. 100 wonderful defenders of our world. Their faces are forever masked. Their tombs are forever unknown. They are... The Wonderful... I knew we forgot someone. You. The Wonderful 101 is a third-person real-time strategy action game developed by Platinum Games and published by Nintendo. Oh sweet! We take a look at another one of my favorite gems from Platinum Games themselves! Seems that Platinum Games' biggest success as of recent comes from this game along with Bayonetta 2 on the Wii U. Don't you guys worry about Bayonetta 2, as we'll delve into that game along with the original in a two-part episode coming next year. For Nintendo's first partnership with the famed developer, Hideki Kamiya took center stage to create another unique gem in his resume of quality goodness, and he decided to revisit the formula of tokusatsu for this title. For those of you who don't know, tokusatsu is a Japanese term for special filming, as it deals with monster movies like Godzilla and superhero shows like Super Sentai and Kamen Rider. This is how Beautiful Joe came about during Kamiya's time at Capcom, and this game is considered by many to be a spiritual successor to that franchise, which I agree. Looking at the wonderful 101, just what is it that made this mass superhero action game so appealing that many people heavily overlooked? Sit tight, unite up, and watch to find out. It's Morphin Time, folks! Sixty years prior to the events of this game, an alien race called the Geth Jerk have invaded the Milky Way galaxy to commence war on the planet Earth. In retaliation, the United Nations created a special forces armada called the Sentinels that donned superhero masks to grant each user their own individual strength and unique abilities. This first battle between Earth and the Geth Jerk Federation is known throughout history as Earth Defense War I, with the second war happening a mere 20 years later. To protect the Earth from any future threats, the United Nations also created a generated force field called Margarita to protect the planet from any further harm from enemy invaders. The next 40 years seem to have given the planet Earth a golden age of peace, even for the likes of an elementary school teacher named Will Wedgwood, the game's main protagonist. However, the Geth Jerk have reappeared to continue their war on humanity. Knowing that Earth is once again in great peril and need of saving, Wedgwood rises from the chaos and becomes Wonder Red, leader of the wonderful 100. A big battle is underway that could threaten the extinction of the human race, and the wonderful 100 must unite together to take down their old nemesis by entering the next catastrophic conflict, Earth Defense War 3. 
The beginning to the wonderful 101 story is kind of the thing you should come to expect from Hideki Kamiya as his writing style doesn't make the characters act as cliched as you would expect them to be, as his writing is something you could expect to see from a western viewpoint, as Platinum Games titles are more done from a worldly perspective and not by a Japanese one. It's very creative, and it gives the characters more personality to which they become more caring and appreciative in the plot. Wonder Red is the well-rounded leader who comically likes to name everyone and their status quo in heroic monologues. Wonder Blue is the lone wolf who struggles to execute teamwork for his own personal gain. Wonder Green is the self-indulging wisecracker who tries to gain the attention of beautiful women. Wonder Pink is the prissy, fashionable heroine with a hot temper. Wonder Yellow is a brute with a heart of gold, but a shy persona. Wonder White is a strategic warrior who knows the code of the ninja to guide his teammates to victory. And Wonder Black is the tech-savvy geek who is very quiet all the time. Their importance to the story is well-rounded, and their meetings with villains and allies dynamically grow their characters, especially the main child of the story, Luca, a boy who believes that the planet Earth took his mother away and seeks revenge against them because of his misconception of the planet to begin with. From beginning to end, the story is witty, nonsensical, but very gratifying altogether, despite there being a few sexual jokes that pop in from time to time for many thinking it's a kid's game when it has a teen rating. It's got great class. Unlike most superhero games where they are generic beat-em-ups that pitch you in physically hurting bad guys, the Wonderful 101 takes that same approach, but gives the formula a huge twist. The whole game is centered around using the Wii U gamepad, as you can command the Wonderful 100 to do all sorts of significant talents that each individual has. Your normal and default motion has you moving around, beating up bad guys, jumping, blocking, evading, sprint dashing, and going into the submenu during the gameplay or from the gamepad to select items that can heal your party members, or have your flying vessel, the Virgin Victory, send you support from the air. The main focus from the controls revolve around the Wii U gamepad's touchscreen, as the wonderful 100 can morph into weapons based on your fingerprint or stylus movements on there. This ability is called Unite Morph, as you can form the wonderful 100 into giant fists, swords, guns, whips, hammers, claws, bombs, naginatas, crossbows, boomerangs, and drills. Using these abilities are bound to give the Geth Jerk a massive beatdown for their non-diplomatic activities. The less members you have to form the appendages, the less damage they'll do, but the more you have will ensure greater damage on your foes. There are other Unite abilities that you can form into, so that you'll have many offensive and defensive strategies at your expense to achieve greater results from battle. There are times that you'll end up inside buildings or vehicles to move around inside of them to solve puzzles. Sometimes the top screen will be your view of the whole structure or maze, while the bottom screen will be your back view of the entire team going through them. It's just as effective as seeing everything at once as certain elements such as secret codes can be on a single screen that you can't see from another, so you'll have to utilize both points of view to progress even further. Another Unite ability is the Unite Glider, as you will have to use this tactic to escape toward other areas that are in the way of open-ended hazards, such as pits and burning rivers of lava, so just form a triangle when you see it so that you don't miss your jumps. For each mission, there are a total of three levels, except for Operation 007, as that consists of two levels only. In total, there are about 26 levels that cover the whole campaign, and the last level of each operation will have you duking it out with a boss that ranks among the high levels of the Gethdrick Federation. From time to time during the gameplay, you'll end up fighting a space pirate team known as the Gyzok that is led by Vorkin, former prince of a planet called Rulo, along with his right-handed warrior named Chugi. These hard times will make the wonderful 100 learn more about teamwork instead of participating in unilateral operations, but a space cop named Amorta will help you from time to time until she is a permanent ally after about halfway through the story. Most of every battle within the game consists of a mission that is a part of the level within any operation, and with the tradition of Platinum Games' own design philosophy, you are graded for how strong your performance was based on the different combos you execute, the amount of time it took to complete the fight, and how much damage you took overall. The boss fights are a bit more ridiculous since most of them will involve some sort of gimmick or bringing about new gameplay mechanics, but you are given the ability to engage in the unlimited forms to use your full strength with no limits of your battery gauge, so that there is a huge plus as every other fight has you at your limits. Speaking of new gameplay mechanics, there are some levels within the operations that will have you taking control of something unique that will pay an homage to other gaming franchises with their own playstyles. For example, 
The boss within Mount Ogerto in Operation 005-C is the Wall Gagujin, and you'll be piloting a Gagujin at your command while duking it out with the boss in a boxing match very similar to that of Mike Tyson's Punch-Out. In Operation 009, you will fly into the heart of the Geth Jerk Federation where the gameplay is that of an on-rail shooter that is similar to Star Fox, another Nintendo IP. When it comes to Hideki Kamiya's gameplay styles, he is a respectful man to pay tribute to some of his favorite games and big hits that were ever conceived, as he done this kind of thing when it came to Bayonetta, as certain stages had the Umbran Witch play with different play styles that gave respect to Sega's classic hits such as Space Harrier, Afterburner, and many others. I feel that those moments within the Wonderful 101 in a Platinum Games title truly shine with what they are all about, as the Wonderful 101 was originally going to be a new IP that combined famous Nintendo characters working together instead of just fighting each other like what Super Smash Bros. is huge for. Going back to the Unite abilities, there are certain instances during every mission that will have a member of the Wonderful 100 unite their comrades to form their signature Unite morphs to progress further and earn extra O parts to add toward your overall currency. So yes, this game has quick time events that don't force you to press a button unless Wonder Red prompts you to jump from platform to platform depending on the situation. Speaking of O parts though, they are the currency that you obtain in this game which are very similar to the souls in Devil May Cry, Yen and Okami, and Halos in Bayonetta. The more of these you pick up during every mission and level within an operation, the easier it is to buy all new Unite abilities, items to heal and power up your characters, wonder parts to act as bonuses to your team's overall stats, and skills that the overall team can use that can attack enemies faster or form Unite abilities via quick time events more quickly. There are certain bonuses such as the Platinum Coins, Wonder Files, Geth Jerk Files, and Wonder Figurines that you can find in each level, but I'll be discussing those during the epilogue segment. One last thing to note about the gameplay is that there are ways you can increase your health gauge by two bars. The first way is to have your members of the Wonderful 100 level up their own ranks, and reaching a certain criteria for your members to grow in their own strength will imbue you an extension to your health bar. The other way is that most of the missions will have heart pieces for you to find, and those will increase a bit of your health too. Obviously, the heart pieces pay tribute to that of The Legend of Zelda, as finding four of them will increase your health meter. One other note is that when certain party members with their own wonderful abilities continue to rise in their ranks, you will be granted with different techniques for each Unite Morph formation, so take advantage of those as you continue to grow your comrades. As you can see, games done by Platinum Games or even by Hideki Kamiya showed that they don't hold your hand because they pit you into the game with no tutorials up the alley, with little ones appearing here and there, but they want you to know that you are in command of the Wonderful 100, as what you do to them to progress forward in the game is what the Wonderful 101 is all about. Overall, a mass superhero action game done in the RTS terrain that is very similar to Pikmin from Nintendo was a very exciting approach to a Platinum Games title this time around, and the learning curve being very steep will have any core gamer or Nintendo gamer smiling from left and right, as they will want more. If I had to say anything about the gameplay, then I'd say that its status is beautifully Platinum, and that's no croc. Before we move on, there is one more mode in the game that is aside from the main campaign called Wonderful Missions. This mode pretty much plays just like the solo campaign, but the levels are extremely short, as it can be played up to five people. One person would hold the Wii U gamepad and play how it is meant to be played, while four others can control their own squads with the Wii U Pro Controller. Unfortunately though, I wasn't able to record footage from that mode as I don't have others to play the game with me, so what you see is mostly me playing from the single player campaign. Would have been nice if something like the Wonderful Missions had online play, but I digress. When we look at the visual history for many of Platinum Games' own titles, we can see that most of them had a photorealistic delivery in the visuals, with the exception of Mad World because of its comic book nature that pays high respect to Frank Miller's Sin City. The Wonderful 101 is the first game to stray away from that direction, as what we see from Platinum Games' first outing on Wii U goes for more of a cartoonish approach with its characters, enemies, and overall feeling of the mini environments in general. Every time I look at the Wonderful 101, I can say that the game fits perfectly well as a Nintendo game that can fit into the company's own library amongst the likeliness of Mario and Zelda. The protagonists are like what you would see from a movie or TV show that is heavy on the tokusatsu concept, but we can see that most of them sport some shine as many Wii U games in HD seem to do that for many of their properties, like with Super Mario 3D World when it comes to the playable characters. From early beta shots of the game, they look very blocky and extremely dated for Wii U standards. 
but the final delivery of the characters from main, antagonistic, and minor sides to the story showcased wonderful results. No pun intended. Probably my favorite missions that had the best detail had to be Blossom City Square, the Stratoport, Neomu Ocean Metropolis, the Lost City of Low Rule, the Lost City of Co Rule, and the Exo Atmosphere at the end. Everything within the operations from the characters, the settings, visual effects, and particles just brim heavily with color, which is something that not many games within next generation consoles seem to do for today's standards. Seriously, who doesn't love to see color in a game, while you continue to stay clinged on to Call of Duty, Grand Theft Auto, or even Halo when they are weak in that field? I know some people out there may despise cartoonish graphics, even if they are colorful, but I see that as being totally biased and non-diversified, as even the most colorful games can be dark in the overall delivery. Just take a look at the Wind Waker. Enough said. The user interface on the pause menu during the game is also something that I adore, as its simplistic look that looks high-tech to encompass the futuristic feeling of Earth is very pleasing to the eye. The sound department also scores really high as the sound effects are very crisp and easy to understand, while the music? Oh my god. The orchestrated soundtrack is beautiful to the ears. I would even go as far to say that it is equally on par with the high quality when it came to Hideki Kamiya's work on Okami for the PlayStation 2. The Wonderful 101 has a total of six composers who create many of the songs within the game, with most of them being ex-Capcom employees that worked alongside Kamiya-san like Hiroshi Yamaguchi and Rei Kondo. Another acclaimed composer who worked alongside them is none other than Norihiko Hibino, the famed musician who worked on big hits like the Metal Gear series for Konami and even Bayonetta 1 and 2 for Platinum Games. I would go back and listen to the music for certain levels within the game as well as the end credits, because I said that almost every tune in the game is beautiful to the ears. I'm not kidding when I say that, and I even picked up the soundtrack on iTunes just so I can support the creators for their hard work. From the voice acting side of things, this game delivers once again on a Platinum Games title, and many of the voiceovers do an amazing job with capturing the characters with their personalities, even if the tale was nonsensical to many people's eyes and ears. Charlie Schlater, Roger Craig Smith, Kari Walgren, Tara Strong, J.B. Blanc, Yuri Lowenthal, and Chris Zimmerman know how to put on a show when it comes to their respective characters that they voice but others such as Gideon, Emery, and Laura Bailey make Lawrence Nelson and Alice McGregor sound like that they are at the top of their game, just like Emery voicing Balthier in Final Fantasy XII. If there was something about the presentation which I find to be very corny, but superb all at once, it has to be the fact that the enemies and bosses are reworded to make them sound like they are in English, but as a way to teach people about what they are actually called in Japanese. For example, the Dogus are called Dogu, with the word meaning clay figure in Japanese, Although they are not clay figures, they consist of the regular grunts of the Geth Jerk as they look like dolls of various shapes and sizes. Orochi is a play on words for the eight-headed serpent of Japanese mythology, Yamato no Orochi. Orochi is not an eight-headed snake, as he is mostly portrayed as a three-headed mechanical dragon that is the steed to the sixth general of the Geth Jerk, Lambo. It's little stuff like that which makes it exciting to know more about the true origins of some things when it comes to a Japanese developed game, and what Hideki Kamiya did in the writing is masterful like his past works. I would be a fool to not say that the Wonderful 101 is wonderfully masterful in the presentation, because that would be disrespectful to Kamiya-san's work ethic as his taste in game design is beautiful to quote another awesome video game series that he created. The Wonderful 101 truly scores big in the presentation. Period. Ever since the journey began for the wonderful 100 at Blossom City, hardships and perils have come about for all members. Red lost his father 20 years prior before the events of the game, Blue lost his brother because of a mole who worked for Geth Jerk and tries to come to terms with accepting teamwork, Vorkin harasses the Sentinels as Amorta helps out to bring her brother back to his senses after losing everything he lost from his home planet, and Luca comes to learn the truth as to why his mother lost her life as she volunteered to become the Earth's secret weapon known as Mother Platinum. As all the super reactors are secured from being destroyed by Geth Jerk, the alien army managed to compromise Margarita to bring Earth on the brink of catastrophe. As the wonderful 100 and Luca make a final attempt to destroy the Geth Jerk with the Shirogane Comet, the final attack becomes in vain, as the Geth Jerk's homeworld known as the Exo Atmosphere is brought forth as the alien forces unleash all their fury to prevent Earth's special forces from winning. With the Geth Jerk overwhelming Earth's special forces with an inexhaustible force, Chugi from the Gaizok, Prince Forkin, 
and a Morta arrived to help our heroes of Earth press forward to reach the leader of the Geth Jerk, a sentient brain-like machine who operates the exo-atmosphere that goes by the name of Jerginga. Jerginga reveals that the Geth Jerk Federation came from 1500 years into the future with the sole intent of destroying Earth. In the future, Earth manages to create the Greater Galactic Coalition to help govern the galaxy from any threats, but they have become so advanced where they become tyrannical toward enemy worlds where they destroy them with no mercy, as Geth Jerk was at the top of their list. The Wonderful Ones don't believe him, but he takes form of a futuristic evil version of the Sentinel suit and fights back. Our heroes and Jerginga engage in a heavy and deadly struggle with both sides showing no stop. In one last attempt, Jerginga tries to destroy Earth with a massive destructible laser, but the Wonderful 100 and their allies form a beam of their own to deflect Jerginga's own attack. The name of this attack is, and I do quote, Final Ultimate Legendary Earth Power Super Max Justice Future Miracle Dream Beautiful Galaxy Big Bang Little Bang Sunrise Starlight Infinite Fabulous Totally Final Wonderful Arrow. Whew! Talk about a real tongue twister right there! The heart of a hero burns strongly in Earth and their allies as their own beam completely vaporizes Jerginga with most of the other Geth Jerk forces. Both sides simultaneously cease operating that force the enemy federation to retreat. Earth is finally at peace once more, with Wonder Red telling Luca to inspire the next generation of humanity in order to prevent them from becoming the monstrosity that Jerginga had warned about. One year later of peace, the Geth Jerk have somehow returned to continue their war on humanity, but the Wonderful Ones are all prepared for the attack with Luca being the newest member known as Wonder Goggles. As the children of Blossom City Elementary School watch and celebrate their heroes, the newly formed Wonderful 101 spring into action to fight the enemy once more. At that moment, the Wonderful 101 comes to an end, with the game treating players to undergo final missions within the credits. The ending of the game definitely sets things up for a sequel, and I truly hope that there is one coming from both Platinum Games and Nintendo in the future. We've seen how many of Hideki Kamiya's games have played out whether if they are from Capcom or even from Platinum Games, as they can be riddled with unlockable content. Unfortunately, for the case of the Wonderful 101, you can unlock harder difficulties where the max is called 101%. However, there are secret characters you can unlock to join your team, which can benefit the gameplay tremendously. There are two ways you can obtain the characters as one way is easy while the other will take a long time to overcome. That long and hard route involves you completing achievements for those specific characters so they can become available to play right at the get-go. It requires multiple playthroughs as some of the achievements are pulled off from higher difficulties, so screw that mess and do what I did. At certain parts of the game, you can press a button code at a specific spot to unlock a set of characters for you to immediately use during the gameplay, but the only catch is that you have to have at least a million O parts to unlock each of the five sets. When you arrive at those locations that I mentioned, hold the ZR shoulder button down and press up, down, up, right, left, X, B, Y, and A. If you stood at the correct spot and pressed the code in the correct order, a jingle will play that indicates you did things right. Now to where these sets are unlocked and what characters in each set consists of. In the prologue from where you first stand as Will Wedgwood, insert the code and you'll unlock the Sentinel set that consists of Wonder Captain, Wonder Scarf, and Wonder Gramps, which they are the respective characters of Lawrence, Alice, and Professor Shirogane. In Operation 001-A at the beginning, enter the code and you'll have the set which contains Bayonetta, Jean, and Rodan from the Bayonetta franchise as wonderful ones, but make sure you have 2 million O parts for this set as it is the only one that has a million more over the others. In Operation 006-B during the fight with Lambo as Wonder Red in the past, enter the code and you'll get the olden day set, which has Lawrence Nelson as Wonder Red who goes by the codename Emeritus, Wonder Daddy who is Will Wedgwood's deceased father, and Will Wedgwood as a child during that tragic event of losing his father. In Operation 009-B, during the shield generating device sabotage, the code you input from the starting position from the battle will unlock the rival set, which has Vorkin, Chugi, and Amorta being playable throughout the entire game. Finally, in the epilogue and after the first car is disconnected, enter the code and get the real superhero set that has Wonder Goggles, Pose Man, and Wonder Director being yours to command. Each of these secret characters has a more powered up version of the Unite abilities, and they are far more powerful than your standard members of the Wonderful 100, so use them diligently when going through the harder difficulties. One last thing I would like to mention is that there is a hidden easter egg that can occur during the cutscenes with character dialogue. As you see the characters talking to each other, 
Holding down the ZR button will allow you to see right through the Wonderful One's masks and see their eyes. It really doesn't have a purpose, but if the masks were getting in the way for you to see a character's true emotions through their eyes, then there you go. Other than that, the Wonderful 101 is pretty light on unlockable content. The only way you're going to unlock any more is if you locate the hidden platinum coins, wonderful figures, wonderful files, and even Geth Jerk files within each level of every single operation. Doing this will uncover more of the character bios, art galleries, and in-game model dioramas that you can view in gallery mode. Even if you don't unlock a lot from the in-game, to there not being any extra modes, there are other little incentives you can find throughout the main adventure. The Wonderful 101 may be light on unlockable content, but the in-game package is pretty packed for the whole game overall. When I say that this game truly rocks, that is truly not a crock, fib, or lie on that statement. The Wonderful 101 is probably the next best thing to come out of the mind of a creative game designer like Hideki Kamiya. It's just a shame that the game didn't build up enough marketing to become a huge hit, as I would say it suffered the same outcome as Okami on the PlayStation 2 from nearly a decade back. Then again, most of the games that Nintendo put out on a yearly basis aren't always for AAA, as I see the Wonderful 101 between that and AA status, sort of a middle ground if you will. By the time when I played this game for the first time, I was close to the end of it that I just ended up stopping for no apparent reason, as other games caught my attention such as The Wind Waker HD and Super Mario 3D World. Now that I have experienced the whole story for itself as well as most of the game, I missed out on quite a lot with what made this game very special to begin with. I for one believe that the whole concept of using Nintendo characters in another collaboration outside of Super Smash Bros. would be a really phenomenal thing. But I guess we really needed a new IP to show that Nintendo and Platinum Games have made a match made in heaven. Plus, this also shows that Nintendo can change their image as a company as they can put out games that really don't hold your hand, as this game is truly for the core gamer in mind, as I'm sure that Hideki Kamiya wants to please even those who have played video games for quite a long time, and the wonderful 101 truly shows. Some might regard the game as being a clone of Pikmin, but that is where those are completely wrong about it, as Pikmin was more of a relaxing laid-back event, while this one puts you right into the action to defend Earth from evildoers. The visuals are really impressive for an HD game as it fits the world, which can be considered a spiritual successor to Beautiful Joe, the soundtrack and voice work are at the top of their class, and the gameplay really shouts out the word wonderful without content. For those who are still on the fence on third-party support for the Wii U, I just have to ask about what it is that you are waiting for. This game is a third-party game done right, and you owe it to yourself to play this masterpiece of an RTS action title, as the many haps you encounter from the story and gameplay perspective will make you want to come back for even more. The Wonderful 101 has been out for over a year. It is cheap to buy a new copy from many places you can get your hands on, and I definitely say that it is worth the buy overall. Unite up and purchase The Wonderful 101 today! today on Double RPG Reviews, so be sure to rate this video as well as leaving your positive and negative feedback down in the comments. Also, be sure to hit that subscribe button underneath that video, as more support from you guys means that more content is coming from me in the future that you won't even find anywhere else. I guess to end off this video, all I need to say is be ready for next year, as there are going to be a lot of great games that are going to come out, specifically on the Wii U, where we have Yoshi's Woolly World, even Kirby and the Rainbow Curse, Xenoblade Chronicles X, Mario Maker, and most of all, the new Legend of Zelda game that's coming out, as well as the new Star Fox game. But for right now, I guess all we just need to do is celebrate the most wonderful time of the year and enjoy it for what it is. So have a happy holidays, a Merry Christmas, Happy Kwanzaa, Happy Hanukkah, and yeah, as I said, most of all, just have a happy holidays. And I will see you in 2015. Hi everyone, thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, be sure to hit that subscribe button for more episodes coming from me in the future. If you missed out on last month's episode of Mega Man X3, give that review a watch as I had a lot of fun playing through it again and sharing my honest thoughts with you all. If you are from the future, be sure to go to this video as we kick off the second trilogy of Mega Man X games on the 32-bit consoles. 
but you'll have to wait until February, as I'm going to be taking a month break to get caught up with more content and such, as well as working on some Two Cents videos that are long overdue. Until then, have a happy holidays, and I'll see you in 2015. This is Double RPG signing off, and I'll catch you later. Peace!